How's everyone doing? Doing all right, yeah? Day two? How was Weezer? Was it good? I wasn't able to go. Um, so has, has anyone here, uh, before we get started, anyone here heard of UTAM before? Any hands? Okay, a few people. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess I should introduce myself first. Hi, everyone. My name is Clay Martin. Uh, I'm the product manager for UTAM at Salesforce. Uh, and before working there, I actually worked on WebDriver over at Microsoft. So I have a little bit of history in testing. And today, we're going to be talking about how UTAM can help you streamline your UI testing of Salesforce. So before we get into that, though, uh, just you know, general statement here, forward-looking stuff. We're going to make some uh, statements about stuff that isn't out yet, as well as some stuff that is out. Uh, so when you're making your purchasing decisions, obviously, base that on what's available. Um, so quick show of hands, though. Uh, how many of you guys have used or heard of Selenium? Awesome. How about WebDriver? Oh, any JavaScript people out there? OK, a few folks. Awesome. Uh, let's get a little bit more interesting here. How many of you guys have written some UI tests? OK, cool. And last but not least, uh, how about, have you guys heard of the uh, page object design pattern? All right, one. There we go. There's two. Awesome. <laughs> All righty. Well, before we get into what UTAM is, let's go over what UTAM isn't. It, it isn't a test framework. It's not a replacement for Selenium. It's not a replacement for WebDriver. It's not a replacement for Sauce Labs or any sort of test framework or grid thing that you're running or cloud software. It's not that, OK? It works with those things. That's the point. It's supplementary to it. Um, so then what is it? Uh, well, UTAM is UI test automation model. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. That's all. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a little bit more than that. If you're trying to put it succinctly, it's a portable implementation of the page object model design pattern. Um, and if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's basically a way to abstract components out of your page to make your tests a little bit more reusable and direct. Uh, but there's more to it than just that. That portable part actually means a little bit. Uh, it means that it's language and framework agnostic for us. Uh, we take, we use JSON as our base for our page objects. And so you author those in JSON. And then we can actually compile them over to Java and JavaScript. And there's nothing preventing us from adding more languages in the future if demand asks for it. Uh, it's also obviously test framework agnostic. As I already mentioned, we have support out of the box for Selenium and WebDriver IO. But there's nothing specifically tying it directly to only those. If there were other test automation softwares out there for UI testing, there's, we could totally add support for that as well. Um, it also has two different audiences, which is interesting. Uh, there's the test author, obviously, people writing tests, stuff like that. But also page object authors. Um, because it's portable now, you can write those page objects, and you can share them with your customers. So that will get into why that's important a little later. And last but not least, it's open source, and it works with any technology. I'm going to give you guys some information about some Salesforce-specific stuff, obviously. We're all here for that. But there's nothing preventing you from taking this and using it for your own software that you have. Uh, there's nothing specifically tying it to Salesforce, which is kind of awesome. So feel free to use it. So let's talk about how UI tests are today. For a lot of people, if you've written UI tests, you know they can typically be flaky, right? Uh, if you're trying to tar target an element, especially in the Salesforce uh, DOM, we use a lot of Shadow DOM, it can be kind of difficult to test that as well. Um, the interaction model can be a bit wanky as well. And also, minor changes sometimes in how we do our markup can cause tests to fail, right? And the functionality of that test is still valid. But, the act but just because we added a div or something, your test is now failing, because maybe your selector is too narrowly defined, something like that. So those are all the problems that we set out to try to solve with UTAM, along with making it shareable. So we do a few things here. UTAM handles Shadow DOM interaction for you automatically. So when you're using UTAM, you just add a little property in your JSON file that says Shadow. And you put your elements that are Shadow DOM inside of that. And I'll, get, I'll show you an example of that later. But what that means is we'll handle that translation for you. You don't need to worry about that. Similarly, we've taken some stances that help avoid some pits of uh, failure. We try to put people in the pit of success, is what I'm calling it. Um, had a friend who used to call it that. So what I mean by that is we, we, right now, we only support CSS selectors. There's reason for that. And the key reason is that a lot of the time, with the way a lot of people use XPath when they're writing tests, uh, they tend to use pretty brittle XPath. And that is a big source of flakiness in tests. Uh, you may not realize it, and it's very easy to get started on that route. Uh, similarly, we push for using explicit weights. What I mean by that is not just having your, your test sit there and run for X number of minutes, waiting for some component or something to load. Uh, it's very unlikely a lot of the time that your customers are going to be willing to wait for that, right? 
if you're asking a customer to wait a minute for something to load on the web page, they're probably long gone. So we take a few stances there to try to help curb some what we call bad habits when it comes to UI testing. But we should also talk about what a typical Salesforce release looked like before UTAM and what we're trying to change that. So uh, if you guys use Salesforce, you might know this release cycle. We release new version. The UI test automation breaks. Uh, you get to go update a bunch of tests for that version. There was no functional difference between those versions, right? It's just that your test broke. And now you're spending a lot of time updating tests, and that's annoying. You're, that's a waste of time. The goal of UTAM is to change that to this. Uh, we release a new version. You update your dependency and your dependency on the Salesforce page objects to the version that correlates to that. And then you go get lunch, browse the web, go on Reddit, whatever you want to do, Twitter, have fun. Uh, ideally, you get that time back, and you do that every release. So that's the goal. So I might have just mentioned, obviously, while UTAM itself is not tied to Salesforce, the Salesforce page objects are. These are the same page objects we use internally, and our teams that build LWC components and our components can use this internally for their own validation. And now, because it's portable, we can take that and share it with all of you. Uh, this is already live today. We released this just last week. Uh, and when I get to our website, I'll show you how to get that. But it's on N NPM for JavaScript and Maven Central for Java. Uh, similarly, the UTAM core framework and runtime is also on NPM and Maven Central already. Those released back in January. So if you want to go author some of your own page objects, you're free to do so. Um, yeah. So then I guess I should jump over to what's next before we get into some demo stuff. Um, what we're looking at doing in the future is we want to be really developer friendly. We want to make it easy to use if you're a developer and adopt UTAM. So better IDE integration. We're looking to publish our schema to schema store, get some support there so that when you, if you're authoring page objects in JSON directly, you get that IntelliSense type of feeling where you're going to, the properties show up when you go to add a new property, et cetera. We're also looking at developing a browser extension. Uh, the core reason for this is that there's some difficulty potentially in mapping your page object to a given LWC component. The goal of this browser extension is to simplify that for you. So you may see more about that in the future. Um, we're also adding support for mobile. We already actually have support for mobile on the Java side out of the box today with Appium uh, for Salesforce mobile. But we're also looking to add JavaScript in the future. That'll be in the near future. We're targeting summer 22 for that. And last but not least, uh, page object generation, because while writing these things manually is fun and fulfilling, uh, sometimes it's nicer if you can get something generated so you have something to start from, a template to start from, if you will. So metadata based generation, where we can take your metadata and generate a page object for you for your custom component is something we're looking at right now and mocking out. Uh, similarly, we're looking at other options, like in the browser extension, potentially being able to generate for a from a given inspected element. So that way, you don't have to go author these things manually to start. You have that good JSON. So with all that said, I thought it might be best just to hop right into demos. And forgive me, I got to swap to Mir here, or else I'll be trying to use it that way. So let me see if it swaps. Uh, OK, awesome. So the demo isn't that crazy. Uh, it's actually all on our website, utam.dev. Uh, this site's live right now. You can go there on your phones or your laptops. Feel free to pull it up. And it's your one-stop shop for all things UTAM. In the top right, you might notice that little GitHub banner. Uh, that links you over to our Java compiler and runtime. If you want to go look at the source code or you want to just learn about the actual compiler that we've built and, and the framework and the runtime, you can go do that right now. Uh, if you want to dive into it and you want to look at some guides, our guide section obviously has a bunch of stuff for you there, too. We have Getting Started for Java and JavaScript, mobile setup. And actually, we also have guides on some of the more complex use cases you can get into, uh, including things like explicit weights, nullable versus this present. These will make more sense when you go and read it. We also obviously have documentation, awesomely done by our docs team, on all the various properties and elements and how to use them that you can use with UTAM to get all that extra functionality. But before all that, and then obviously, last but not least, uh, we have the Salesforce section. This is where you can actually go to get those Salesforce page objects I mentioned to you earlier. There's links right here to Maven and NPM, also how to use them, and how to incorporate those into your application today. But my favorite thing, and the thing I'm going to be doing my demo in today, is actually our tutorial section. And this is all live running in the browser via JavaScript. Uh, this lets you actually play with various examples. This drop down in that top left has tons of examples you can play with yourself, uh, and actually live code in the browser and have the test run and actually give you results right there in your browser. So if you're trying to learn this, figure it out, this is a great way to get started. Mix this with those guides, and you're good to go. 
Um, so I thought actually I would give you guys a little example here. There's two I wanted to show you. I'd start with the simple one, the hello world, because why not? That's always the best. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but up here in the top left, so there's four windows here. You can kind of see it's right. You got a little grid. That top left one is your actual JSON object. That's your, that's your JSON PO file. That's your PO file there. And the top right is the compiled types that you would get from that in code and JavaScript. And if you actually get compiled JS, you can actually see the actual JavaScript that you would get generated from that page object. In your bottom left, you actually have your, your test itself. In this case, it's just a simple hello world test. And then in the bottom right, you have your live DOM example. We could, you can actually do a DOM tree viewer and see the, the base structure here. Or you can just right click inspect element and pull that up yourself and look at this right in the DevTools and see how simple that is. So let's go through this page object. This is a really simple page object here. It's only 15 lines of code, right? Pretty simple. Uh, and we'll just go property by property here. So the first property you see is root. This is defining this page object as the root page object for a given page. So you're saying this is where you start with for this page. The next is you give it a selector. This is how UTAM knows how to find this on that page. In this case, we're just using the body element, nothing fancy. So we just give it a CSS for body. There you go. Now when you invoke that in your code, it'll know to go to that page and use that to select. But let's go a little bit further than that. Let's go to this elements array down here. And if you look at that, what we're actually doing here is we're defining a sub-element, a sub property on the page that we want to test. This is what we're actually trying to get at here. You give it a name, and a little cool thing about doing this all live is if I modify this name, you'll notice on the right here that the class autom automatically updates. Instead of get world, it's now get foo. And same here if we go over here. I'll change it back to world because it's our hello world demo, and you'll see that updates there. So that's the name property that'll end up showing up in your code when you go to use this. Likewise, you provide the selector for the actual element you're trying to target. In this case, we want to target the world element, right? So let's look at what that actually is. If we inspect here, you'll see that there's actually a span with the class of world. So we got our dot world that maps to that class. That's the only class on the page. There's your locator. And last but not least, you have public true. What this does is whether you want that property exposed or not. So if I set this to false, you'll see get world disappears on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and set it back to true because I'd like to show you the demo. So those are kind of the basics, a very simple PO here, but I actually want to show you down here in the tutorial section the test. Uh, and we'll start right from the top. This is all JavaScript, so sorry for you Java devs out there. Um, no love lost, though. Uh, right from the top, we import our, our page object as hello world root. So you can see right here, tutorial hello world that maps to the file here. We import that as hello world root, and we go into our test. Right off the bat, all you got to do, instead of all those navigations and other things, you just call dot load. UTAM dot load, hello world root. That's going to pull that up for you. Then we're going to validate that it's actually loaded, which is what we do next. Then we go on to the next thing. What we actually want to do here, the purpose of this test is we want to validate that those three earth emojis show up. That's it. Really easy. So we want to load that world icon, right? So we give our variable world icon, and we do dot get world here off the hello world root object. And when that gets back, now you have basically that span and the properties that you would expect to interact with in that span. So here, really quickly, we call it get text on it. That gets us the text inside of the span. And then we assert whether that's equal to the emoji. And if we hit run here, you're actually going to see down below a little success. And if I modify this live, that should fail right there in your browser. That's a pretty basic example. I thought, why not hop over to one that's a little more complex, show you a little bit more meaty, maybe some Shadow DOM stuff too show you how that looks in actual page object code, because that's a little more interesting. So we're going to go to this edible actions demo. And I'm going to go ahead and collapse it here. And we're going to look at this page object. And this one's a little different, you might notice. Uh, it looks the same at the top, right? You got your root true for your page. You have your selector. In this case, it's targeting a custom element called example basic form. But here you'll notice we just encapsulate those elements inside of a shadow. And that tells UTAM that, hey, what you're going into here is actually shadow DOM territory. So you know, we might need to do some stuff. We actually do the wiring behind the scenes to connect your selector through to that. So we'll take your CSS selector and we'll map that to the element inside there that's in the Shadow DOM. You don't have to worry about that. So inside the Shadow DOM, we're going to go ahead and define an element here. We're defining an input. And then we're giving it the selector. And here you can actually see another cool little thing you can do with UTAM, which is awesome. You can give it your CSS selector and actually pass in a variable here. And in your args down here, you can define what that variable will map to. In this case, we're going to give it a name. So that will be the value that gets replaced by that percent %s right here. Sorry, bad highlighting right there. 
And then last but not least, you have your public true, and, and the very last property is actually also very interesting is the type. So by default, we have several types in UTAM. These types define your interactive model, your interaction model with that element. Whether it's a button, you might give it a type of clickable. If it's by default, everything has an, an actionable type. So if you don't specify any type, it's actionable. Those come with some generic properties. Those types determine what properties hang off your object when you're in code. So when you do that dot, the get world, those types of properties, if you define it as clickable, you might get the click method, right? Something you would see in Selenium. If you do editable, you might get send keys, those types of things. So in this case, it's editable. So the purpose is to type text. And sure enough, when we go down to our test, you can see here we have a little simple form. Oh, let me scroll it, sorry. Oh, it's cut off because I zoomed in. Let me uh, zoom out real quick. You can kind of see up over here the name field. I don't know why it's being a punk. Let me refresh real quick. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's just because it's zoomed in weird. Anyways, there's three fields here. There's a name field that's cut off. There's an email field and a message field. And if you look at this test here, we'll actually go through it really quickly. Same thing, right? We import our page object. We go to run our test. We do that first load of the root page object that you're going to use on that given page. But we're actually trying to test that input field, which is inside of the Shadow DOM. So first things first, we give that input. And we actually pass in the variable, what we want here, username. And this maps one to one right over here. So if we come up and inspect this input at the top, you'll actually see, let me see if I can zoom those in for you guys. You'll actually see here, here's your shadow root, right? There's your example basic form element, that root page object. And if we dive into here and we look at all these inputs, you'll notice there's one with user underscore name, right? Sorry, right here. You can see that the name property is set to username. That's what we're basically hunting down here, which is going to map to this name field. So we grab that and we do a clear and type. So because it's an editable type, you now have this property hanging off the input element called clear and type, which will clear any text inside that input and then type the text, the string that you give it. So we're going to give it a string of Kevin, and then we're going to run a simple test here where we assert that obviously Kevin is equal to Kevin. That's it. Um, and if we run this test, you'll see it runs successfully and to validate that I'm not just making things up or showing you magic stuff, if I change that to clay, it fails, sadly. But if I change this one to clay, test passes. It's that simple. Um, there's lots more to UTAM than what I've just now talked about, but this is kind of an initial overview of it. Um, so yeah, let me hop back over to slides. Just want to give you a couple of those demos. Let me swap to extend again and give it a second. It can be a little finicky. Let me try extending one more time. There we go. Oh, it popped up. Yay. Okay, okay, so where do I start? Well, I already showed, told you that and kind of showed you that, right? UTAM.dev. There you'll have the downloads, documentation guides, best practices, tutorials, and more. You can also always bug me on Twitter, DM me on Twitter. I'm glad to respond there. If you have an issue, you don't need to go for on, U, on the core UTAM run, runtime and framework. You don't need to go through normal support if you don't want to. You can go right to our GitHub and file an issue or feature request there. Feel free. Uh, we also monitor idea exchange. So if you have ideas, you want features there, feel free to post them there. Uh, if you had issues with your specific Salesforce page objects, for those, you should go through your normal support because those are owned by the teams that built those LWC components. So yeah, with all that said, I thought we'd get into a little bit of questions. Uh, feel free to just come up here and uh, join me on stage or whatever. If you want to just come talk to me, I'll just be down here. And yeah, thank you. That's it. <laughs>